posting all the transactions of a complete accounting cycle. In the past lessons, we learned to post one transaction into two accounts. In this lesson, we shall post all the transactions of an accounting cycle, and we shall see how the accounts of the ledger get filled, and we shall distinguish cash and money at the bank. Once again, for the sake of simplicity, we shall consider a shop which buys goods, records them in a purchases account, like does traditional accounting, and sells them without any physical transformation. Our buying price will be 40 euros per item, all of them will be the same, and our selling price will be 100 euros per item, and there will be no VAT, value added tax. In reality, over one accounting year, even a small firm has thousands of transactions. But we shall look only at 19 transactions, pretending they are a complete year. And we shall look at the first accounting cycle, when we start from a blank slate. This uh, lesson is not an illustration of realistic good management, but it's an illustration of the whole accounting process. Here's the journal of Joe's business uh, over one complete accounting cycle. Of course, since it's the first accounting cycle, the first transaction is Joe puts initial cash into his business. It's going to be 10,000 euros. And then we shall take a part of this cash to the bank account, 8,000. Then uh, Joe will buy a delivery van on credit from Jules' garage. 3,000 euros, and then we shall pay rent, uh, 1,000 euros, we shall buy goods on credit from a supplier of goods called Dutra, etc., etc. So let's look at each transaction one by one. Transaction one, we are already familiar with that. Uh, initial capital is put into uh, the firm. So the cash account, because it's cash at first, is debited 10,000 euros. That's the money that Joe puts into his business to start the operations. And as we have already seen, there is an account recording uh, the sort of value going out, that is a receipt given to Joe uh, for this initial uh, cash, and that's credited 10,000 euros. Let's go to transaction two. Transaction two. As I said, we take 8,000 euros of this cash to the bank. So the bank account will receive 8,000 euros and the cash account will be credited, that is, will give out 8,000 euros. So we shall be left on premises with only 2,000 euros. But we also have 8,000 euros at the bank on which we can write checks. Transaction three. Joe's business buys a delivery van on credit from Jules' garage, and this van costs 3,000 euros. So what the firm receives is a van. So a transportation equipment account, call it a van account, is debited because it receives value 3,000 euros. And Jules' garage account is credited 3,000 euros. That's a liability of the firm. That's money that we owe to Jules, but we didn't pay with real money yet. We paid with an IOU. Transaction four. We pay rent for one quarter in advance by check. So we shall receive the right to occupy premises for one quarter, and that's worth 1,000 euros. And we do pay the landlord 1,000 euros with the check. So the bank account is credited 1,000 euros. So now we have at the bank only 7,000 euros. Transaction five, here. We purchase goods on credit from Deirdre. We purchase 100 items at 40 euros a piece. So we receive them in the firm, but in traditional accounting, this purchase is recorded in something called a purchases account. So the purchases account is debited 4,000 euros, and since we pay on credit, first of all, Deirdre's account is credited 4,000 euros. It's an IOU we send to Deirdre. 
transaction 6. We pay shop expenses 1,500 euros by check. So we receive various uh, things which are, are called shop expenses for 1,500 euros. It's a debit in this account. And there again, the bank account is credited the value it gives out 1,500 euros in, on credit. So now at the bank, we have 5,500 euros. I remind you that during the first accounting cycle, usually uh, the bank account will always have to be in debit. That is, we shall always have money at the bank. The banker usually does not accept uh, that we owe it, him money at first. Transaction 7. A sale. We sell goods on credit to Sally. So we don't receive money, but receive an, we receive an IOU from Sally. And we record that into Sally's account, which is a part of the debtor's account. So it is debited 3,000 euros. And you remember, a sales account is credited 3,000 euros. It's a special account uh, to uh, compute later on the profit. And this corresponds to 30 items, 100 euros apiece. Transaction 8. Joe's firm sends a check to Jules Garage to settle its account. So you remember that uh, Jules account, which was an account of uh, liabilities, which had been credited 3,000, now is debited 3,000. So Jules account now has what's called a balance of zero. And the bank account has given out 3,000 euros. We were at five. Uh, 5,500, we are now at 2,500 altogether. We still have money at the, at the bank, in other words. Transaction 9. We receive partial payment, cash, from Sally. That was uh, one of the client before. So the cash account receives value, 2,000 euros. That's the, the partial payment from Sally. So it's debited, 2,000 euros. And Sally's account now is credited 2,000 euros. So Sally owes us only, anymore, 1,000 euros. Transaction 10. We take Sally's money to the bank. So the bank account is debited the 2,000 euros and the cash account is credited, the same thing. So we are back in the cash account at uh, 2,000 euros altogether. So, we have treated, so far, 10 uh, transactions. 1, 2, 3, up to 10. There remains 9 transactions to, to study, but we shall do that in the next lesson. I'd like to make a note on the inventories. Since we are following the traditional accounting technique, we record all purchases simply enough in a purchases account. And we shall look later on at the end of the accounting cycle in the process called adjustments at the actual cost of the goods were, that were actually sold. But nothing prevents us from taking a look at the inventory right now. So there it is, corresponding to the first 10 transactions we've studied. Up until uh, January the 12th, we had no initial inventory. And on the 12th for the fifth transaction, we have an inventory of uh, zero. We purchase 100 items. So after this transaction, we have an inventory of 100 items. And then uh, nothing uh, changes uh, for transaction six. And for transaction seven, the initial inventory is that one. But we sell now uh, to Sally some goods. We sell 30 of them. So our new final inventory after uh, the first sale to Sally is 70. And we shall see how it evolves after uh, the next purchases and sales.